Hi, Dr. Brian Mills from Mountain View, California with OBI faculty. Today, I want to talk to you about non-surgical treatment of an anterior open bite. And in particular, what I want to do is compare the analog orthodontic setup workflow versus the ExoCAD digital workflow doing your orthodontic setup. What I want to be going over is how to diagnose and treatment plan and create a blueprint so you get predictable results when you're treating your patients with an anterior open bite so you can take patients such as this and give them a good stable occlusion. So whether you're in the analog world or the digital world, the principles we apply are all the same. We want the joint in the socket, we want all the back teeth to touch at the same time, and we want the proper overbite, overjet. Now, to be able to do that, you need to know your arc of closure. If you're not on an arc of closure and you're just using, say, an Invisalign uh, simulation where it just pancakes the teeth together in the surgical mode, it's not going to really help you determine if you're going to be able to get anterior coupling of the front teeth and establish proper anterior guidance. To do that, you need to be able to measure how the patient opened and closes, how the teeth fit together, and put that on an articulator, all that data and information. Now, whether it's analog articulator or digital articulator, it doesn't matter, but you do need to be on an articulator so you can evaluate the arc of closure. So let me take you through the diagnostic process and what's involved in determining uh, treatment for an anterior open bite and whether it's going to be a surgical case or a possible ortho-restorative case. Here's our patient, 29-year-old female, moderate to severe anterior open bite, posterior teeth. She's already had a couple crowns done due to fracture and severe wear on the posterior teeth. And what's involved is first you need to begin sectioning your models so you can take out the back teeth and begin to arc close to see if the front teeth will couple. So as we remove the back sections of teeth, you can see it's beginning to arc close, but still no anterior coupling. You get the bicuspids out, and we do have anterior coupling, but not adequate over right over jet, and you can see our first contact is on that canine. Um, go ahead and relieve that so we can finish doing our diagnostic process, and we can get the front teeth to couple with minimum overbite and over jet. In the posterior teeth, we reset them, do an orthodontic setup, and using a metal tray that won't flex with polyvinyl material, we that we've created a uh, intrusion guide to be able to measure in three dimensions how much intrusion and any torque we'll need to apply to the teeth to get the anterior teeth to couple. We do our wax up, and this is so critical. We need to apply these principles, and we need at least three, hopefully four millimeters of overbite and one and a half to two millimeters of overjet for proper anterior guidance and function. You can see I've projected that uh, cusp tip on number 11 because that's where ultimately that tooth has to be placed orthodontically to be able to restore it properly. We go ahead and do orthodontics. In this case, we are using TAD intrusion. And we begin here. And as with all your CR orthodontics, you need to do mounted models and progress models that are mounted models. And so we've accomplished our intrusion. And it is pretty much what we predicted. And you notice number 11 is in a much better position. So now we go ahead and complete our wax up, add on the proper tooth form to establish the overbite over jet. And we've taken this case and gone from here and restored it, and here we are. It's a lot of work, a lot of model work. You have to manually cut off the teeth. Your progress models, you have to mount them, pour them, mount them. So now let's look at the ExoCAD orthodontic setup and the workflow there. Once again, it's critical all the same principles apply. We need joint in the socket, posterior centric contacts, and anterior coupling. So what you're going to do 
is go ahead and create your uh, work order as you normally would. In this case, we're going to do anatomic ponics. And we're going to also incorporate a pre-op model. Mount your case. Now I'm going to go over the details of this. We go through our mounting and then detail it to where we're happy with uh, the proper mounting. And once you've done that, so we have it mounted, we have our pre-op and working model aligned. Lift the pin, go to first contact like you normally would. And this is a different case, but you can see the analog model and the digital model match and first contact. So here's our patient's first contact. And what you're going to do next is we're going to basically segment the teeth. So we're going to do an extraction and copy it. So go ahead and extract the tooth and do a direct copy. And takes a few seconds to do each tooth and you're just going to go ahead and complete that and do that to all the teeth so you have a complete set of models with all segmented teeth and there we have this model and now you're going to go to tooth placement and here we're going to be intruding the teeth digitally now I've already done calculations about how the approximate amount of intrusion I will need to be able to get our anterior coupling which is a different topic for a different video so here we are intruding the teeth you can see it's a lot easier I'm cutting them off the model waxing them on once you've done that then you go back to your articulator run it and once you've run the articulator you're going to go ahead and look at your occlusion Looks like we're getting some pretty decent coupling and posterior contacts. Now this patient's had multiple episodes of DJD in orthognathic surgery. So on the front teeth, there is a lot of excess composite because we've done revisions over time. And that's what you're seeing there with the red. So we're going to be removing all that. So we're back down to just natural tooth structure. And you can see that molar, but that's her natural molar. So we go back to tooth placement. We intrude a little bit more on that side, run the articulator. And you can see it's, we're in the ballpark. We'll finish detailing that occlusion a bit. Now we're gonna go and remove all the excess composite that's on the anterior teeth. So we're just on natural tooth structure. Just using our free forming tool once we've detailed the occlusion, now we go back and we can evaluate the intrusion anterior and the anterior coupling. And you can see we do transparency. Well, we've got about three millimeters there, and we'll measure that more precisely with our cut view. And now you go to your cut view. And in your cut view, you can measure your overbite and overjet to make sure you have adequate coupling And function and you can see we do now you're going to use that same cut view to evaluate the posterior teeth and how much did we intrude so you're going to overlay your pre-op model with your working model there we have 1.47 using the cut view on the top teeth now just to give you an example on the bottom teeth you know you set your cut view and you can use that plane and just move it through the arch and take and evaluate each individual tooth and exactly what what when and where you've done your intrusion and so here's our final case that we're going to that we've diagnosed and it looks like we'll be able to accomplish our goals posterior centric stops anterior coupling genetic tooth form Much easier in the digital world applying ExoCAD and using it for your orthodontic setup. If you found this interesting and want more information on the diagnostic process and how to do minimally invasive restorative procedures for your patients, I'd suggest you go to biosetics.com and you get all the information you need at that website. It's Dr. Brian Mills, OBI faculty. Take care.